Well, hello everybody. It is Wednesday. It's about 4.20 in the afternoon, I believe. I'm down here at the lake. A light breeze, and if you can look behind me, we see some dark clouds coming in. And uh, I know we're excited about seeing some uh, dark clouds come in that'll be filled with rain. Uh, as you know, I'll just move out of the way. You can see the lake is clearly down. And as I was talking to somebody earlier today, actually the cousin of uh, the family, the guy that owns this ranch, he was saying, well, how's the lake doing? And I said, well, it's four or five feet down. And he said, yeah, the main lake, Lake Leon, is about 10 feet down. So you can see that uh, around our area, we definitely need the rains to come. And we're looking forward to it. We have full confidence that the Lord will bless us with his rains, with his fall rains, his winter rains, and his spring rains. And we just, we're blessed by that. I want to, I want to thank everyone who watched my video on Monday talking about Israel. I suppose I'll be making some more videos talking about Israel, but I just want you to be aware. You need to understand all of the world basically has an attachment to that small country of Israel that literally is in, I, I would say, the center of the world, the geographic center of the world. And I, I believe this is, this is what I believe. God did that for a purpose. He wants us to focus on the land he chose, the people he chose, and he wants us to focus on him. Now, I'm going to share with you a couple of verses and some ideas. And we're going to focus on truth. Now, if you're looking at my shirt, it says Strategic Air Command. I was in the Air Force, uh, including my time in ROTC, about 24 years, a little over uh, 20 years of uh, full active duty. <clears throat> and most of my career, I was in intelligence operations. Now, some people, you know, they used to joke that's kind of, uh, you know, kind of a joke, intelligence and etc. cetera. But, uh, you know, I, I do the best I can. Uh, I know when I went to squadron officer school, uh, that was the joke. I said I was an intelligence officer. And they said, yes, we know that's why you're here. But what do you do? Anyway, that's, a, that's an old joke. But I'd like to share with you some truth. Because that was my job. For over 20 years, it had nothing to do with the church. But it had to do with the world and the situations that we could look into and forecast. Uh, one of my jobs, I was the chief of indications and warning for 5th Air Force at Yokota Air Base, Japan. Basically, what we would do is we would look for indications of what the enemy forces around our region were doing. And what kind of an impact that could have on our U.S. forces, our Japanese allies, and our South Korean allies. So that was what we did. We looked for the indications and warnings that could spoil the day. I'll put it that way. Now. What I want to share with you and what I have been sharing with you are indications and warnings that come from God. Where do they come from? Right here, the Bible. 
the Word of God. Everything you need to know, basically, about your life, today, tomorrow, and forever, you can find within the pages of the Bible. Now, let me give you a little tip. You will either believe it, or you won't. That's your choice. Now, let me go back to a little bit of a story to highlight that importance. When I was in Japan at Fifth Air Force, we were involved with the shoot down. You might be familiar with the Car Korean airliners that was coming in from the United States into South Korea. It flew in an area close to the Soviet Union out in the far eastern areas. And as it came across, the Russian Air Defense Forces decided that they would go and shoot down KL-007. And everybody on board died. Now, we worked on that situation for a number of weeks. We got to the end, and we got to a point where it was looking like we were going to be in some sort of a confrontation with the Russians out in that part of the world. We had fighter aircraft that were orbiting And our generals wanted to know, what is the situation? What should we be doing? And we got some indications that the Russians were trying to trick us, deceive us into crossing over the line. And I'll just say this, getting into a massive furball and who knows what internationally that would have led to. So we had to come up and tell our generals that we're being tricked. It looks like the real thing, sir, but it's not. We're being tricked. So call off. Call off those fighter jets and do not let them cross the line. We were telling the truth. We had to share the truth. And you know, that's what I'm called to do today. I can look at all sorts of things. And you know, that's one of the things that Jesus talks about. In the last days, I don't want you to be deceived. Paul talks about that in right into Timothy. I don't want you to be deceived. And you know, folks, I don't want you to be deceived either. I want you to know the truth because the truth will set you free. And here is where you start, where I always start in the sense of your eternal life is right here. John 3.16 and John 14.6. You see, Jesus came to do what? To save you and me. To save all those who would believe upon him, that they might have eternal life. He later says in the John 14, 6, I am the way and the life, and no one will come to me or come to the Father but by me. Let me say that again. I am the way the truth, and the light. And no one comes to the Father but by me. That isn't a truth that I'm sharing from my, myself. I'm sharing the truth of the Word of God, Jesus Christ. Now, 
let me highlight something that comes out of the book of James. You can look it up, James 4, chapter 4, verse 8, and it says this. Draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. I talked to a lady today, and I always ask her how she's doing. She says, well, I'm, I'm getting by. And when I checked out, I said, you know, I almost quoted this to her. I said, just get close to God, and he'll work out the things with you. He'll show you what you need to do. And I'm going to say this, I'm going to be quoting now from the book, My Utmost for His Highest. I use this often from Oswald Chambers. I highly recommend that you get this book. But he says this, it's essential that people are given the opportunity to act on the word of God on the truths of God. The responsibility of acting upon the word of God is up to the individual. I can't act and you can't act in their place. So when I share a truth, it goes on kind of like what Jesus said. If you have ears to hear, then listen up. But a fuller reading of that in the Greek comes out of, if you have ears to hear, then take action. You take action. It's your responsibility to do something with the Word of God. You will either believe it, receive it, and begin to act it out, or you will make the choice, I don't believe it, I'm not going to receive it, and I'm not going to do anything with it. I'll close with this, and it's all tied to what I just shared. People wonder, well, will God send me to hell? Nope. I'll say it again. Will God send me to hell? Nope, but he will give you the chance to either accept his word and live eternally with him or choose to deny his truth and what he has provided for you in the life, death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus and end up eternally separated from God in hell. Because remember this, if you don't learn anything else today, we are spirit beings. We have a spirit. We have a soul, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions. And we have a physical body that puts it all together. If we didn't have this body, nobody could see us. We are created <laughs> in the image of God. We can't see God. He's a spirit being. But we're created in his image. He's given us that spirit. When he breathed into Adam the breath of life, he was breathing in the spirit that we all carry, that we all carry. So we have the opportunity of our spirit. We'll never die. <laughs> you, heard, you might have heard this first here. We will never die. Our physical body will fall apart, be put in the ground and decay, but our spirit lives forever. So I ask you, do you want to have a life eternal with God, or do you want to have a life eternal 
separated from God in torment nobody can imagine. Lord, I just thank you that you have given me the opportunity to share your truth, simple truths today. All I can say, Lord, is what you have shown me to say today, I can share, but I can't take the action that those who are listening will either take or won't take. That's up to them. So, Father, I thank you for that opportunity to share your truth, your eternal truth, that it will make the difference in every life who takes action. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We glorify you. We thank you that your hand is over Israel. We thank you for the protection that you are bringing to the defense forces over the land. We thank you for the protection even of those that have been captured. I think of the two little ones that my wife and I are directly praying for, Aviv, who is two years old, and Raz, her sister, who is five. And Lord, we know that you have your angels prepared even to go and rescue We know that you are giving the way to those that are putting their lives on the line, the soldiers in Gaza that are going through the tunnels and fighting those that are in the way, taking them out and looking to rescue those that have been abducted. So God, give them your protection. Give them your peace. And we give you the honor and glory, for you are our God, our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer. Bless you. Bless you all. In Jesus' name. Amen.